Hey there mudroomers, it is Carmen here with Mako. And today here we have a bunch of test tiles where we mixed and layered various other glazes with our stoneware texture glazes in order to add color and create different combinations with these products. We get um, asked a lot how, if people can add mason stains or change the colors of our texture glazes since they just come in white and black. Uh, we have our both of our mud crack glazes here and both of our magma glazes here. If you notice, these are our new labels and these are our old labels. They're kind of rotating out, just so you know, this is what all of our new labels are gonna look like moving forward. So before I get into the thick of it, I'm just going to save whoever doesn't want to watch a test tile review video some time and just showcase what I found works um, to change the colors of our texture glazes. And then throughout here, all of these tests are going to showcase information about these products, but they might not always be ideal, especially if you're expecting it to just be like a purple mud crack or something of that nature. As some people may have found out, layering other products with the texture products are going to affect the texture outcome um, out of the kiln. So that's kind of like what this is showcasing here. I'll go over all of these in a little bit more detail, but first I'll just kind of showcase the things that I found to be the most reliable and most successful when it comes to the texture staying the same or staying consistent as well as creating some color variation. So to start, we'll go over our magma glazes. I think this is the one that can be colored the best, particularly the light magma. The dark magma doesn't take color super well. Um, so here I have uh, one of our magma tests and this is done by applying two coats of light magma, one heavy coat of our stoneware gloss glaze, we used bright blue here, and then two more coats of magma. So you can see here, we still have some texture happening. It's really, really nice. We do have a little bit of sheen to the texture, but it's still a nice dimensional and cratered surface that has turned to be a bluish. And then we kind of get some pink hues that come out with our magma, with our light magma glaze sometimes. So that's showcased here. But as far as our light magma goes, Mako's recommendation for adding color would be to layer or to sandwich a gloss glaze in between. We have tried mixing mason stains in as well as all the tests that you see here and the mason stains tend to just fire out for some reason. Uh, I, I've not been able to get a stain to stick. It will create some like colored little edge line on it but in the bulk of the texture you're not going to see a color if you mix mason stains in with our magma glaze. And I did try the same test with the dark magma as you may have expected. It uh, didn't really change the color but it did kind of affect the texture a little bit but not negatively. We still have some cratering and everything like that so with our light magma this is the way that I would recommend to add color. And I actually have a couple more samples here with some other gloss glazes. We're putting this, these projects on our website. So we've got the red gloss here. Blue gloss again. This magma wasn't as applied quite as heavy as the test tile or the blue gloss, honestly. It's the color's a little bit more subtle. And then here we've got our green, bright green. So that's our recommended way to add color to any of, to our light magma glaze. Again, I'll go over these and these, um, once I go over this mud crack example. Here I've got them with uh, stoneware glazes and here we're showcasing gloss glazes um, 
underglazes and stroking coats. So that's kind of what we've got going on here. And then as far as our recommended uh, mud crack coloring, there actually I have not found a lot of success uh, adding color to our white mud crack. Here I have, this one really definitely affects the texture, but applying the magma over top of our iron wash, you get this cool texture that uh, kind of adds some brown in with the mud crack here. So that kind of works, the texture is affected, but I do think it looks pretty cool. And then when you apply the light magma over the dark magma, or sorry, the when you layer the white and black mud crack, they'll become this blue color. So you can get a nice cobalt blue by layering these two. But for the most part, anything's going to affect the texture really significantly. And as you might be able to see here, the mud crack kind of freaks out um, when it's applied underneath other glazes, which I thought was really interesting. I would think that another glaze would help the mud crack adhere, but it just pops right off. So layering these would probably be my best recommendation as far as maintaining your texture and adding another color option to the mud cracks. So that's the quick and dirty for what we found to be successful with all of these test tiles. Um, we do have some interesting results here with our stonework glazes, so definitely kind of peek through to doing that to see what we have here. Um, so I'll just go ahead and get right into it. The mud cracks, like I had said, they, if you apply another glaze over it, it seems to just pop right off of your piece. So we, I try to do a variety of samples here um, of different glazes. So I've got a breaking glaze, a really stable matte glaze. Um, like you can see, the mud crack just popped off here. Um, the mud crack adhered a little bit better, but this glaze that has gloss and is moving, you completely lost the texture. This matte glaze, you do get a little bit of um, mud crack sort of on it, not super consistently, um, but it does showcase itself there. And then here we've got a crystal glaze and then a really mobile glaze. So here we've got satin patina and then um, blue hydrangea. So again, when you put something else over top of the mud crack, it just pops right off of the piece. And on the back here, the you lose a lot of the texture when you're layering it. So this is enhancing mobility and the satin patina. And then this kind of just intermingles with the uh, crystal glaze that we have here. And I don't think I mentioned these first two glazes, sorry. I have uh, stone denim and uh, lemon meringue. So that's the stonework glazes with the mud crack and then we'll go over here with the magma. So as far as layering stonework glazes with the magma, I had a little bit more success with those. Um, I didn't lose quite as much texture. Uh, the texture glaze did not pop off of the piece, which was really nice. Um, so the stone denim here, it does eliminate some of the dimensional texture here, but and then add some gloss, but we still do get some color added as well as maintaining some texture. So there is like a little bit glossy rough texture here if that's something that you're seeking out. And then when you put um, the stone denim underneath it, you lose a lot more of the texture and have a lot more mobility. So that stone denim really helps the glaze kind of move down. And then here we've got our lemon meringue. So lemon meringue here, since it's a matte glaze, it doesn't have a lot of movement. You still maintain a lot of this texture really, really well here, both applying the lemon meringue over and applying the lemon meringue under. It doesn't affect the color very much though, so maybe a little bit here, um, but it's mostly 
kind of adjusting the texture a little bit. So here is where the combo is and here it is by itself. So the craters get a little bit rougher, a little bit less consistent. It's really, really wild, wild going on here. And then here we have the magma layered with satin patina. So we got satin patina over. So we lose a little bit of the texture, but I love this color and how it pairs with the pink and the magma. Kind of cool there. And then here we have satin patina under. We have a little bit of mobility and then kind of like random clumps of texture, which uh, is super interesting. I really like how these two colors go together here. And then finally, the last stonework glaze that we tested with our magma glazes, we have our blue hydrangea here. The blue hydrangea kind of smooths out a lot of the texture when you layer it over the magma glaze. It does affect the color a bit, but you're really, really losing a lot of that texture. And then here, you put the blue hydrangea under, you get some beautiful visual thing happening here, but not a lot of texture, but there is a bit of pinholing or orange peel sort of thing. So it's like the magma adds just enough texture to affect it, but not enough to seem like an intentional texture glaze. So that's what I did for the stoneware tests with our texture glazes. And then here I have some more tests where I layered, here we've got under glazes, here we've got um, stroke and coat, and here we have our gloss glazes. So first we'll do our under glazes. What do we have here? Under, oh, this is magma, okay. So here we'll do our white, mud crack under UG19. So this is a blue underglaze. Like the other tests, if you layer mud crack underneath something, uh, it just pops off. So I don't recommend that. And then here we get some really interesting texture from layering the underglaze under the white mud crack. So typically we just recommend layering applying the mud crack directly onto your bisque piece, but um, you can add some underglaze and create some really cool effects. This has dimension to it here, which I think is really interesting. Of course, you wouldn't want it on a functional piece, but I, that could be a really cool texture to achieve there. And then when it comes to our stroke and coats and our gloss glazes, we kind of lose a lot of the texture, basically. So. Again, the mud crack popped off like nobody's business when you put the mud crack underneath another glaze. And here we have mud crack over another glaze. So you get a really cool effect here with the stroke and coat. And then here you do maintain some texture, but it does soften pretty significantly. As far as the light magma goes, when you layer it with our underglaze, you get this really cool papery result. Um, I think that's super, super interesting. It kind of builds up as the coats build up. Here I've got one coat, two coat, and three coats of magma with just two coats of underglaze over the whole entire thing. So this is really interesting. Um, I think it's pretty cool. Again, probably not a functional thing, but it's like dry crumpled paper which is super surprising. And then we put the underglaze under the light magma and didn't have much of an effect. Maybe at one coat when you get a little sandpapery, but for the most part, it didn't really change the results that much. And kind of similar to our mud crack when you're layering these with our stroke and coat and gloss glazes, um, you lose a lot of texture, you get some shine, and you do have some color change, but the main thing here is that we're losing a lot of that texture that we're kind of trying to preserve. So layering it underneath the gloss glaze or stroke and coat is not going to have as much like that dry texture feel. And then here we have stroke and coat and gloss underneath the light magma. 
So here, again, we're losing the texture. This maintains a little bit more, but doesn't affect the color that much, which is kind of why here we settled on sandwiching it. So you can get that color and still have your texture. And then the results where we mixed the glazes together. So here's stroke and coat mixed with mud crack. pretty much just smooths out. This is underglaze mixed with mud crack. I thought it was interesting that it did get glossy, um, probably from the mud crack. And then we have gloss with the mud crack, completely no texture at all, just glossy sort of transparent blue. Here we've got stroke and coat mixed with our light magma. Just uh, not a lot of texture and it's glossy. The mixing the underglaze with the magma, that adds some nice color, but you are losing a lot of the texture. So this might be nice, perhaps building it up more than three coats would add more texture and still color it really well. Cause this is probably the best result we have color wise, but it's not quite as where I wanted it uh, texture wise. It's still kind of sandpapery and not really cratery. And then here we have light, or blue gloss mixed with our magma and similar to the stroking coat, it glosses up, flexes up, and you lose a lot of the texture. So there we have it, just a little overview of all of our test results. Hopefully that gives you a little bit more insight as to how these glazes perform when they're layered with other glazes. If you have any questions or if you have a way that you like to add color to any of our texture glazes and have found success with, please let us know. I would love to try it out in our studio here at Mako. Um, for anybody that made it through the whole video, thanks so much for sticking with us and uh, nerding out a little bit with the performance of these products. It is really interesting to see even the tiles that aren't successful because it helps you understand, have a more comprehensive understanding of how these products are going to perform, which gives you more insight as to how you can make them be successful in your own personal practice. So. Thanks so much for tuning in today, guys, and until next time, make it Mako.